is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Double hitter day on the ACC Network. We open with 12th ranked North Carolina in Steel City to take on Pitt. Then some will see Wake try for the upset against number two Virginia in Charlottesville. Others head to Atlanta to see Florida State take on Georgia Tech. It's an ACC doubleheader day on the ACC Network, and it's now. Carolina arrives for an ACC game in Pittsburgh for the very first time. A Nor'easter is along with them. It's been a long and arduous week, however, for this program and Roy Williams, the head coach. The passing of Dean Smith this past week dominating the news. We welcome you to our ACC Game of the Week. I'm Tim Brando. There's absolutely no question this has been a difficult week for all of us that love college basketball, but particularly palpable for Roy Williams and the North Carolina program. Today they will honor Coach Smith with that patch, Dean, Dean Edward Smith, and uh, the coaching staff will have lapel pins on as well. Mike Jaminski is by my side. You were recruited by Dean. You competed against Dean. I know it affects you as well. No, no question. You know, whether you played against him or for him, he affected your life. He was a true gentleman, uh, a great coach, and, and that's a, a fitting tribute to him, a guy who's synonymous with this program. As Roy Williams told us, his wife would remind him there is a basketball season to be played, and it begins right now. Bryce Johnson and his impact in today's game against this pit front line. I always thought that he was a pretty good indicator for this team and when he plays well they are very difficult to beat and uh, he had a terrific game a week ago against Boston College 20 points 10 rebounds his sixth double double when he plays like that they are very formidable for Pitt Jamel Artis is playing as well as anybody in the conference over his last eight games after 20 points five times over 20 points. He's a very versatile player. Tim can score in a number of ways. I've waited for a number of years for a game inside the Peterson Event Center and it's the Oakland Zoo and they've been here since we arrived two hours ago. North Carolina comes a calling for the first time in an ACC matchup in this building. We'll be back with the opening tip after this. Hey, this is Richard Rawlings from Gas Monkey Garage here to say that you could win a chance at a half-court million-dollar shot courtesy of Havlin. I'll be there to help you gear up for the ultimate clutch performance, and don't miss your chance to become a millionaire. Enter today at DA slash million. Ruby Tuesday introduces endless choices, endless combinations. who passed away on February 7th. Upon his Coach Smith was the all-time leader in both NCAA and ACC basketball victories. His contributions to the game of basketball, as well as his leadership in race relations and education, are well-documented and immeasurable.
Kentucky basketball is being brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers. By Ruby Tuesday, official corporate champion of the ACC. By Hyundai. And by Food Line, official supermarket of the ACC. We welcome you back to the Peterson Event Center here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Our ACC matchup between the Pitt Panthers, a team really of another significant win, and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Looking forward to this matchup, and I know that the fans here are loving the fact that they finally get North Carolina in this building. Yeah, it's, it's been 20 years, and of course, they weren't a member of the uh, conference back then. Tim Clockerty is our lead official today. He'll toss it up, and we're underway. We're going to have to do it one more time. It's like a Groundhog Day here. We'll do it again. <laughs> right away, it leads to an opening run out for Wright. Cameron Wright got it right off the tip, and it's two to nothing pit. Well, it didn't take too long. Great uh, anticipation that time, and for the confetti to go flying in the air for the first basket. Here is Britt working on Wright. But we asked Roy Williams, and then he, he didn't even know who he was going to start with this game. He's changed his lineup a couple of times. Page can't hit the three ball. And uh, Jamel Artis had it knocked away by Bryce Johnson, so Pittsburgh will control it. Yeah, I think the matchup with Boston College was one that he felt really good about Isaiah Hicks. But this is a different type of team. Uh, and he's decided to go ahead and go with Hicks to open this matchup. But the chances are he won't get to the to the rim as easily as he did against Boston College. Count that basket. Goaltending the call. One of the things Jamie Dixon talked about with North Carolina's pressure, especially out on the wings, that the back doors would be available. And that's just a terrific cut that time. Nate Britt losing sight of where he was. Mentioned Tim Clockerty, Jerry Heater, and Michael Stevens, the rest of our crew. That runner won't fall for Justin Jackson, the freshman phenom who played much better last week. In to end, pin out to the kind of start you want. Michael Young running the floor beautifully, and six unanswered to open. Ball tipped away, and another turnover by North Carolina. Boy, early on, Tim, and this is a pit team that normally doesn't like to play a tempo, but they are looking to push. Is that old saying? Teams that run don't like being run on. That's happening right now. Well, North Carolina averages about 10 more possessions per game than Pitt. And James Robinson will pick up that foul. Been the steady eddy of this backcourt for Pittsburgh. Many times they'll go with three guards in their lineup, especially since Cameron Bright is back. Jamie Dixon, a four-time National Coach of the Year, now in his 16th season since taking over for Ben Howland. Came here with Ben as an assistant. They were together all the way back during the days of Northern Arizona. Flagstaff. Johnson can't get that one to go. Jeter, who got the late call at the starting position, number 21, the sophomore from Beaver Falls, with the rebound. Uh, Pitt uh, electing not to double team that time, so uh, Bryce Johnson had a, a couple of dribbles and a pretty good look, just couldn't convert. Shot clock down to five. Artis, that was a tough fall away. Did graze the iron. Look at that strong move by Young. Look at that. Well, Michael Young lost 10 pounds over the summer, but it felt like it's made him a lot quicker. Michael Young averages 3.6 offensive rebounds a game, Tim. They've really got to put a body on him. Well, that's pretty obvious. The Tar Heels have been out tough early on here. Meeks, nice strong move. He goes to the left hand.
not done so in the first. Up against Johnson, took it right to his chest, well defended. Well, he, he was the matchup that they were worried about, and I think that's why you had the, the, the starting lineup that you had out there at the time. But uh, it's, uh, Bryce Johnson is quick enough to guard him out on the perimeter. Meets again. No double, but a foul will be called against Michael Young. Jamie Dixon told us he knows of the size of this North Carolina team. He may go deep into his bench to get more big players that don't play as many minutes as a result. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, Tim, that uh, Derek Randall coming in for yep. some size, a right little, little, little girth. It. But um, coaches talk about that before the game and in practice. But then when the game gets going, they're reluctant. They, they want to see the floor. Who had been starting, checks back in. Excuse me, Newkirk. Josh Newkirk, 13, checks into the game. Roy has gone to his bench, too. Simmons has checked in. Tokoto as well. And Joel James. Simmons, uh, the quintessential energy guy to come in, give you a little bit of a lift. Tokoto. Off the front iron. Again, Pitt looking to run. Artis is down there. Numbers. Four on one. And a beautiful defensive recovery by North Carolina. Page got down there, as did James. Ruined a run out for Pittsburgh. Well, here's the look, and that was a nice pass, but the terrific recovery, and uh, not often you see Marcus Page get a blocked shot. Togato, boy, he led a beautiful wraparound pass that James was not ready to corral. That was actually a good look. In traffic, Jeter with steps. Timeout, just over four minutes gone by. Pittsburgh out of the gates quickly. all-time leader in both NCAA and ACC basketball victories, his contributions to the game of basketball, as well as his leadership in race relations and education are well-documented and immeasurable. All of that was before today's game, and I want to congratulate the Pittsburgh 
administration and the basketball staff for handling it with such great dignity for their opponent today. Well, I think the, the measure of the man is that in all the all the comments that have been made this week, Tim, not just people from the Carolina family, but people who competed against him oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. You and I have known Coach Williams for a long, long time, and it was um, it was already a rough year, but it became a most difficult week when he learned of the passing of Coach Smith. It meant so much to him, as you see. Jackson Simmons get involved yeah. with a bucket, and it's 10-4. to 4. Nice two-man game that time, and we talked about his energy, and he's coming in and giving this team a lift. Chris Jones has come in out of the timeout to join up with Newkirk and Wright. So a three-guard look for Jamie Dixon. They dig into this clock, control the game. It's easier to do once you've got a lead. That that time an unforced error as Newkirk did not move where Jones thought he would. And that's one of the things you rarely see from the conference of taking care of the basketball and giving themselves opportunities to and Maybe that's the thought process of rushing the ball up the floor to not having to play against that half court defense. Tokoto, tough shot. Pulled down by Artis. Newkirk, nice move. Pass was a little high, but Artis corralled it and hits on the runner, and it's 12 to 4, Panthers. Well, such a versatile player. Three-point range, has the mid-range game as well. He's really been getting to the free throw line a lot over the last three games. Another reach, leading to yet another foul. This one by Randall, a senior from Brooklyn, picks up the personal. Yep. Jamie knows he's got some fouls to give. He'll have to do that. With that frontline core, we could see some of Ochebo as well, the Nigerian. There really is striking along the front line to see the size difference from North Carolina and Pitt. See the field goal shooting story. Those uh, early runouts led to layups for Pitt right off the opening tip. Three ball that goes. Knocked down by Joel Berry, freshman from Apopka. And missed seven games with a groin injury, and uh, neither one of these teams rely on the three a lot. So this is going to be a throwback game in yeah. many oh, ways. Right. They just got Joel back before the Boston College game after that groin injury. There's a tie ball, and the arrow is going the other way to North Carolina. All the points for the Tar Heels have come from their bench. And Justin Jackson will check back in, replacing Tokato. This is a beautiful building. You know, it's been around for 12 or so years now. And, uh, but uh, it reminds me a little bit of Fitzgerald. The last time I was here was the old uh, field house, Fitzgerald field house. Man, the crowd was on top of you there. They are here, too. Yeah, and it's, it's really neat the way they've done with the student section on, uh, on three sides of the court. The Oakland Zoo. <laughs> Yeah, they dig it, too. I got, my, I, I got myself a T-shirt, actually. Well, they came over and they gave us headbands today, but yeah. I got a T-shirt the last yeah. time I was here. Love that. Got a few of those, too. I'm taking some swag with me. On the treadmill later, right? <laughs> Meach was trying to work pick and roll, but Britt couldn't get it to him. Brick, too strong, pulled down by Jeter. That was a really tough contested shot that time. Nice ball fake by Young. He takes it to the rack and is fouled. It's, with this backcourt for North Carolina, it's kind of an extended uh, rest for Marcus Page in this first half. And Williams word a little bit about his minutes piling up, so he's getting him some time now. Bryce Johnson got the foul, his first. You know, they had the win against Notre Dame, and you look at uh, the way they played lately. Now, they had a lead with 10 minutes to play against Louisville, and uh, Patino's team, and they, they're known to do this at the Yum Yum. They got a 
a second gear and, and took that game away from them. But Pittsburgh is the kind of team, if they can get a win here, they could maybe become that sixth team out of this team. Out of the I don't think they, you know, they've got to finish strongly and, and make a really good showing in the AC and the AC at this point. But this would certainly be a, a great resume win for the NCAAs. Johnson from point blank range off the feed. First points from a starter for North Carolina. Really nice play by Justin Jackson that time. Good find. We were having some uh, issues with our transmission today with the inclement weather outside. And uh, we apologize for that. We're working on it feverishly and hope to get it ironed out as quickly as we possibly can. Well, here's that look. They just got switched over on Jackson and uh, that time Chris Jones late getting in on the play as you saw from the weak side. He should have been in front of that play. Right at the free throw line. Britt picked up the foul. Some groans from the crowd after that missed free throw. Well, wow, he's only 55 percent yeah. at the free throw line, so not stellar there. But uh, they really missed him in his time out with the broken foot. That one catches all of the iron, but goes through. When you think about it, Page has been bothered all year long with his feet. It's tough to play this game deep into the regular season when you're having issues with your feet. Well, he's, Marcus Page says he goes the first four minutes just trying to get things loosened up. Yeah, but Robinson, oh, the iron kind on that lay-in. Oh, 16 to nine pit. Only made me wait eight minutes for that one. <laughs> Meeks in traffic, counted in a foul. Young picks up the personal. That's his second. 11.55 remaining. Robinson makes it go round and round, and that is the definition of the Iron Child. Thank you. Hit up five and it started early in this game with the easy layup off of the tip from Cameron Wright. Uh, and it has continued. They've gotten out into the open floor, really shooting a high percentage early on in this game. Team seven of 11 have missed their only three, but gotten off to a quick start. Yeah, this is a team, as you know, Mike, they, they don't necessarily play that way for 40 minutes 
but it did stake them a lead and gives them an opportunity to command the tempo of the game. Yeah, not selectively they're going to do it. I mean, yeah. it's not like, um, you know, this would happen in their last game. They got into a track meet. Louisville went on a 22-2 run, and things really came unraveled for them. They played well for most of that game. Meats cannot convert the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, James Robinson, what an underrated, undervalued point guard. He controls this tempo exactly the way Jamie Dixon wants it. Uh, great assist to turnover ratio, and that's uh, really a, a, a statistic all that their guards enjoy. Jackson feeds Page. Looks inside to Meeks. That was a beautiful pass. Great ball movement by North Carolina. Right, North Carolina early in this game, and in their set offense, it's getting to the rim as much as they want, either off the dribble or off the pass. Very similar, really, to the uh, performance against Boston College. That was a layup drill for them. In traffic, Randall had it, lost it. And Page triggers it out to Tokoto. Tokoto leaning in, can't get it to go. Another offensive rebound for North Carolina. Page pumps, and we're tied. Yeah, he's their most reliable three-point shooter. The so number's down from last year, but I think, Tim, more because teams really have locked in on him on the perimeter. He's getting tougher shots. 7 nothing run for North Carolina. And under two minutes' time. Robinson off the curl, too strong. Randall goes reversal. That was a nice move by the youngster from Brooklyn. That good positioning, anticipating the shot where it was going to come off. Well, through the years, the Pitt program has always been able to go and find some tough, lunch pail guys from the New York area. Johnson answers to make it an 18 all game. This program was built yeah. by Highland. He did a lot of that. Well, and also, too, you know, no, hardly any McDonald's All-Americans. No, absolutely you not. Know, this is just guys who stay here four years and improve. Toughness. Wow. He's another example of it, isn't it? Yeah, and then I tell you what, uh, a little undersized as your power forward, but 6'7", uh, has great range. He's a tough cover. 21 to 18. Just over nine minutes remaining here in the opening half. First of two today on the ACC Network. Johnson can't connect. And the heels pick up a foul over the back. Meeks gets the foul, his well, first. Yeah, and this is what makes Jamel Artis so tough. And uh, you see the screen, the pop, you have to honor that shot, but he's got the ability to put it on the floor as well. We talked about his mid-range game. North Carolina has Page on the floor along with Meeks. Isaiah hits his check back in with Tokoto and Joel Berry. Jeter, counter. <laughs> Only his third made three of the year. How about Tanner. that? He's now three of ten. He just went from 22 to 30 percent in one fell swoop. Hicks. You're right, though. They're continuing to get the ball down low. Well, that's what they should do against this team. There's no real shot blocker out there for Pitt. And North Carolina is just pounding it inside of the paint. Oh, missed a wide open. Randall on a cut, and there the perimeter jumper doesn't fall for Jones. Here's Meeks at the elbow. Well, he really has been steady for him, and that uh, the, the loss of weight has served him well. He can play for much longer stretches of time. He's got eight already. Off the curl, Jones decides to drive it this time, gets the contact, and one coming his way. Could have settled for the jumper, decided to take it in and challenge North Carolina. 
A relentless attack of the 10 in Pittsburgh. You are watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, also streaming live on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Today's coverage of ACC basketball is also on AFN, the American Forces Network, and we welcome the nearly one million men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. We're Proud to have you with us and hope you're enjoying our broadcast. Well, Tim, these, both these teams playing at a high level offensively. You look at uh, North Carolina. They've got, uh, they've got 10 assists on 10 made field goals. <laughs> That's amazing. Hit seven assists on 11 made field goals. Pretty efficient basketball. Yeah. Really is. And Pitt, who prides themselves on defense and closeouts, have not been able to stop North Carolina for, from getting inside the painted area. A little 2-3 zone look. There's another one from slam dunk range for Johnson off a tip, and it's 26 to 24. Yeah, against the 2-3 zone, you should never be able to get a pass down the middle like that. They did get a hand on it, but not enough of one. Joseph Ochibo, the junior Nigerian, is coming to the game for the first time. Number 50 in white. And uh, Tokito will commit that foul on the drive as Page was trying to ride through. But it does go against Tokito. Artis trying to uh, trying to clean himself up there. Yeah, and that's just, you know, you, that's an easy call for the referees. A uh, lazy defense by Tokito. Didn't move his feet, just tried to reach in and get the steal. Our Haviland Player of the Week is Pitt sophomore Jamel Artis. The Baltimore native averaged 26 and 8, three and a half assists, three steals, and leading the Panthers to a couple of wins. Scored a career high 32 against Bryant, second highest point total by a Pitt player in Peterson Events Center history. And he achieved the first double double of his career, 20 and 10, and an 83 77 win against Syracuse. Well, there were some anxious moments in the building when he was bent over trying to collect himself. They could ill afford to lose him for any period of time. See if he favors it. He's hobbling a little. See if he can work it out on this end of the floor. North Carolina's hit their last three field goals. Yet trail by four.
interior pass to Hicks, and he can't get the jump hook to fall. Well defended that time, and it's o Ochebo that comes out of there with a rebound. And that's what they need to do, limit those second shots, and that was 30 seconds of really good defense. Jeter! Well, I see why they wanted to tag him with a start today. 31 to 24. How about that? Already five points for him. Comes in averaging just under four. And the pit run is now 13 to two. 13 to six in the last 345. But more recently, 13 to two. And Chris Jones has some nice, nice length to guard Marcus Page. You can really bother him on his jump shot. This is as good of an offensive performance as we've seen from Pitt in quite some time. I mean, they are lighting it up. Yeah, they're, they're, their offensive numbers are middle to bottom yeah. in the conference. These early starts are conducive for them. Jeter on the glass. Count it. He's up to seven, doubling his normal output. And the Oakland Zoo is loving it. Johnson. Answers inside the painted area. Well, I, you know, there's been nothing wrong with North Carolina's offensive no. end of the floor. It's the other end of the floor that uh, I'm sure that Roy Williams is going to talk about at halftime. On the pop out, Robinson. And again, failing to close out on a quality shooter. Boy, your pit, you're Jamie Dixon, you're shooting four, seven, and three, you're liking things. The lead is 10, largest of the game. Tonkato's pass is a good one, but the foul committed as Isaiah Hicks was trying to take it down low and back up. He gets hacked by Artis, his first. You know, Tokoto is their second leading assist guy, but sometimes he takes some chances with his passes, but that, uh, he threaded that one in nicely. A little bit of that Brett Favre mentality. Yeah, he does. A little yeah. bit of a gunslinger when it comes to his passing. Mike, Mike, let's get your Carolina four keys to the game in this one. Well, when we talked about North Carolina, we, uh, you know, we talked about they wanted to keep the tempo up, but it's been Pitt that's been early, and for uh, <laughs> Pitt, Jamie Dixon was worried about. Uh, Keep, you know, uh, keeping up with and competing with North Carolina on the backboard. He had other ideas off the opening tip. A few fast breaks for Pitt really staked them the lead. North Carolina came back to tie it, and now we're in the midst of a 13-6 run, or actually at one point 13 to two, and the Panthers have opened up a nine-point lead. It was once 10. Interesting how game plans can change when shots are falling. <laughs> yeah, it makes, uh, you know, as, as Jamie Dixon said, it makes life a lot easier when we're making shots. And so far in this game, they have. They've been terrific. Right off the bounce. Keep on, keep it on. Robinson, right. Inside, Artis. And even Jeter making a difference today. 61% on the game so far. Meets his foul. He went right up into Artis's chest. And it's going to go against Jamel. And that is his second. Time to look down the bench and get some help. And Chris Jones will be called upon. Talked about the weight he lost, Mike. The other thing that he's done is he's managed to stay on the floor longer. He now will play 24, 25 minutes. There was a time when Kennedy Meeks, you were going to get about 14, 15, and that was about it. Yeah, he's, he's been really consistent, too. You know, top 10 in rebounding, averaging 12 points a game, shooting a high percentage from the floor. Two out of five at the line, North Carolina, after that make, and it's a 10-point game. Bill Barton, Brandon Knight. On that staff of Jamie Dixon. North Carolina going a little 2 3 zone right now. Well, everybody's got it in their repertoire now. I mean, everybody. Jeter again. 
Randall on the glass. Saves it to Jones. Back to Jeter. And Jackson collects the rebound. Place would have exploded had that one gone. Now that was some great work on the offensive glass by Pitt. Almost a poor pilfer for right, but it was on the end line. Out of bounds to North Carolina. Coming up on the Hardy's Halftime Report, we'll look back at the incredible life of Dean Smith, hear from his players, friends, fellow coaches on the impact he had on and off the court. We'd be remiss if we didn't also mention that we suffered a tremendous loss nationally in coaching when Gary Tarkanian also passed earlier this week. And I think in some measure, Mike, the thing that jumps off the boards when you think of Dean and, and you think of Jerry Tarkanian, larger than life figures in the game at that time, the heyday of college basketball, but proof that you can be successful in polar opposite ways. Yeah, no, you, you couldn't find two people for you know, but the uh, success uh, Tarkanian winning the national championship in 1990. And then having that undefeated season uh, ended by uh, Duke in the final four the following year. Some may have uh, suggested, and they did, prior to that win that Coach K got in 91 in Indianapolis, that, that UNLV team might have been, had they won that game, considered the best team to have ever played in the modern era of college basketball. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be a contrarian, and you're going to have to, <laughs> you're going to have to start with me with the UCLA team. Oh with, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Alcindor and then Walton. No question. And Jackson gets the job done with a runner on the baseline. But that was the talk going into that Final Four after they had blown out Duke by 30 in Denver in the championship and then later, of course, uh, played Duke and lost. And Mike Krzyzewski got the first of all those championships. Well, you, you talked about zone defense. If Mike Krzyzewski's playing zone defense, <laughs> then everybody's playing yeah. zone defense. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Jones from downtown. Well, they are just lighting it up. 41 to 30 pit. Four of eight now from behind the arc. We talked about it. That is not a big part of their offense. Meeks. Boy, the game is just really rounding into shape, isn't it? That was a shot that in the day you'd always allow. Maybe not now. 41 to 32.
Robinson. Grado. 44 to 32. Well, the scouting report on Pitt <laughs> needs to change, I think. Yeah, well, I, you know, and sometimes game to game, in game, it changes for a player and it changes for a team as well. They are six out of ten now from downtown. Randall sets the pick. Well, they're getting it to the middle, aren't they? They're getting it right to the middle. And right gets them to a 14-point cushion. And Roy Williams has seen it up. He is, and you can tell that look, too. He is not pleased with his ball club. Here's that last play. A good screen and roll. Are you not supposed to get it to that position on the floor that easy. And, and they're and Tim, they're they're getting they're getting really good looks too as well. Well the ACC and your local Toyota dealers are unlocking the ACC archives. You can relive over 90 classic games. We head back to 91. Dean and his number two Tar Heels looking for the upset of the top seed Duke. One of the largest margins of victory in ACC championship history. Tar Heels won it 96 to 74 behind the MVP Rick Fox. He had 25. Hubert Davis now on Dean's staff added 17. Visit the ACC.com slash vault. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. There's Hubert. I was a little surprised, Tim, when, when he chose to, uh, to to leave ESPN yep. and get back on the bench, but uh, enjoying it, working hard at his craft. Nice to see that he's... Uh, as I say, willing to, not every great player that went on to the NBA is willing to pay their dues as an assistant coach. And uh, Johnson takes it right up again, and the foul spotted against Jeter. That's his first. Well, he's got a, a size advantage against Jeter, but I, I think Jeter really bailed him out with that foul because that was going to be a tough shot to make uh, Johnson a little off balance. Closed captioning for ACC basketball is brought to you by Bojangles, famous chicken and biscuits. It's Bowtown. <laughs> 46 to 34, just over a minute remaining here in the opening half. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, the G Man, alongside for today's activities, the first of two. Here in the ACC. Mm -hmm. If you're Pitt, you want to be careful with this possession, not give up the uh, this lead that you've built up, and maybe expand on it a little bit, keep that momentum going into halftime. Digging into the shot clock this time, it's under 10. Right. Another offensive rebound. Randall put it on the deck. Had it taken away as a result. And I think we may have to travel. It'll go, to, it'll go back to Pitt because the ball was corralled. And you can't have that happen and roll over. So it was an easy call to make yeah, by Rand Michael Stevens. Randall almost almost made a mistake there because, you know, they, what he should have done is kicked it out <laughs> and they could have finished out the shot clock. Yeah. Fortunate to get that possession back. Shot clock on, but only for four tenths of a second, so they can milk it and not even allow North Carolina to have another touch if they can get it in quickly. They get a timeout. How many times does that happen against a North Carolina team? Difficulty getting an inbounds pass in. That may be my greatest memory of calling games involving Dean Smith, Mike, and of course Roy was on that staff with Eddie Fogler. The thing that jumps out in, to me was that at the end of every game. They always had more timeouts. Yeah, I know. They were, they, they were never, he was never without timeouts under, under four minutes. Yeah. E ever. <laughs> ever. Now, yeah. well, the Ram Power Play is brought to you by the Ram 1500. This past Wednesday, the ninth ranked Cardinals hosted the Panthers at the Yum Center. Midway through the second half, Louisville's stingy defense would lead uh, to a ferocious dunk by Anton Gill. Cardinals would roll on to beat the Panthers 69 to 56. And that is our Ram power play. 
Well, it, it's it's really the fascinating thing, Tim, about all of this. You know, we talk about standings and everything. Those five teams at the top, only four are going to get the double bye. It's going to be interesting to see who's the odd man out of that group. It might be a, it, the fifth team might be the shocking team. Yeah, it really could be. Duke could be in there. You get the three teams. You know, it seems like Notre Dame and Virginia right. are locks for one of the you know, two of those positions. But then it's going to be North Carolina, Louisville, and Duke at 8-3 yeah. battling it out for those other two spots. I, I would suggest to you that North Carolina and Duke are good candidates for that spot. Still have a lot of basketball to be played. Basically holding it for one, four-tenths of a second differential. That's it. Young. Hello. A slam dunk, and Roy Williams is living. He will be the first to the portal to get out. He is hot. He, he led the charge into the tunnel. He just oh. walked right by everybody at the end of once that possession was through. He had seen enough. Well, here's the play inside, and we've, we've just seen this for the whole 20 minutes for Pitt getting into the lane, the dunks, the nice passing, really good execution. That ties the largest lead. And it's 48 to 34 at the break. The Panthers in need of an influential win. ACC. <laughs> There's only one chicken sandwich this exciting. Come on, is that you got? <laughs> Wendy's Asiago Ranch Chicken Club. Welcome into the Wendy's Halftime Report. I'm Prim Saripapak. Coming up, we'll get you updated with everything that's going on today and join the ESPN Buzzer Beater Network in progress. Now, Buzzer Beater features unlimited live cut-ins, highlights, and analysis from the biggest matchups throughout College Hoops. But first, let's take a look at today's Wendy's Wooden Award Watch. And the honors go to Frank Kaminsky, the senior forward of number five, Wisconsin. He's their leading scorer and rebounder, averaging 17.3 points and 8.3 boards per game. He's also shooting an impressive 54% from the field. The best on the team. So up next for the Badgers, who by the way are first in the Big Ten, they will have Illinois on Sunday. Alrighty, as promised, we will get you up to date with everything that's going on today as we join the Buzzer Beater Network in progress. Just a reminder that Buzzer Beater is available through participating TV providers and live on Watch ESPN. Enjoy. microphone. Jim's happy to give away that money. Congratulations. Don't spend it all in one place. How about that? That's amazing. We have found some shooters up in this piece. It's about time this year we got some winners. What a day they're having down in Dallas, Texas. See, Reese Davis is about to give him the huge chest bump. I love it. I got it. You got to love that. I mean, imagine what you can do on a college campus with 18 grand. Are I know. you kidding me? It's all for books and study. I'll tell you what. There's going to be a lot of pizza and other stuff. Liquids bought on college campuses. I tell campus you what. Some, some soda. Some sodas, baby. Malcolm Huckabee, Lisa Kearney here with you on Buzzer Beater presented by Capital One. We saw the early games tip off. We're now at halftime. And we look ahead to the games getting ready to get underway. The game for the day for you, Kentucky. It's all about Kentucky for me. You look at them, everybody has their eyes on them to see whether or not they can go undefeated. When you play against Kentucky, and they've shown some vulnerability their last two games, Vanderbilt and also Florida, and maybe kind of starting to figure them out. But against Kentucky, the one thing that you are going to have to have is good guard play. If you turn the ball over against them, they are going to convert those to points. They average 18 points off of turnovers. Guard play is key when you play against Kentucky, and you need guys that can knock down perimeter shots. I don't see it happening. I know they have Florida at home. I think that's their last game, but my money right now is on Kentucky going undefeated through the season, maybe potentially to the national championship game. Now, Malcolm, you don't just talk about college hoops. You were a point guard at Boston College. You know how hard it is to win games at that level. Kentucky's done it 24 straight times, one win shy of, excuse me, matching their best start in school history. That would be 25 and 0. Taking a look here at Kentucky's remaining regular season schedule, 
unbelievable. 99%, 94%, 99%. It's hard to win out when teams are gunning for you, Malcolm. Can they do it? Yeah, I think Kentucky is the one team in college basketball that can shoot the ball poorly and have a bad game and still win against another team that plays their best game. They are that talented, and I think it starts with their defense. And Calipari, Coach Calipari, and everybody talks about him as a recruiter. I think he's underrated as a coach. It's one thing to have talent, but he gets five guys to buy into playing unselfishly, but also playing defense. You know how hard that is. You were a player as well, too. Typically, when you have an all-star team, it's difficult for guys to share the ball and then get them to defend. He gets them to do that year in, year out. I think Cal is underrated not only as a recruiter. Obviously, he's a great recruiter, but I think he's underrated as an X and O guy and a motivator to get these guys to buy into team first. I don't know if anyone's ever called Coach Calipari underrated. That's an awesome term. Now, I wonder, I wonder if we can put back up, put back up the, score, the uh, remaining schedule because I want you to look at the teams that they're about to face here as they go down the stretch of the regular season and who has the best chance at the upset. I'm going to go with Florida. They've already seen them once. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because it's going to be at Kentucky. I'm actually going to be calling that game for ESPN Radio, so I'm looking forward to getting down to Lexington. But I think Florida really probably is the only team. Billy Donovan obviously has been there, has won a national championship, and they've seen them once already. They think they showed some some vulnerability in that game, so I think Florida may have the best chance to do that. Maybe Kentucky goes into that game a little nervous because it's the last one. They know how difficult it is to go undefeated. Mm -hmm. To say you're perfect, not too many people can say that. So I'm going with Florida with the best chance, but I would not put my money on it. I say, if you're going to take a loss, take a loss early in the season. It's not bad to get the feeling of that loss early. But the last season of the regular season, the last game of the regular season, that could be tough to take a loss there. You mentioned Coach Cal, underrated. Let's talk about some other underrated teams here as we look ahead. And teams that you like, uh, Temple, let's start there. Yeah, Fran Dunphy coming off a disappointing season last year where they gave up close to 80 points per game. This season they're holding opponents below 62 points per game. You look at their BPI, but I go back to that best win, Kansas. They didn't just beat Kansas at Kansas. This was... They dominated that game, and obviously Kansas is a, a team that's going to be, and I think the best conference. You look at what they did, and they have a point guard and Will Cummings, one of the best points, not just in his conference, but I think in the country. He's a thousand-point scorer. Actually, call a game where he scored his thousand point. He does a little bit of everything for them. He's an excellent defender. He's in the top five in scoring, assist in his conference. He is an outstanding player. He is a guy that I think when he gets it going, Temple is a very difficult team to play against because they're defending this year, and that's the big difference with them. Joe Lenardi uh, releasing his bracketology. Temple, a projected 12 seed. Another team that you like under the radar, Stephen F. Austin, uh, leads the Southland Conference with a perfect 10-0 league record. They're doing something right. They got a player by the name of Jacob Parker, nicknamed Sunshine. Oh, I love it. Tell From the, the story. movie, Remember the Titans, he looks exactly like him. I had him earlier against Memphis. He is a guy that is a matchup nightmare. When you look at some of these mid-majors, and you look at Sunshine right there with the long locks. Give he, him some sunshine. He is a guy that can knock down threes. He can handle the ball. He can pass. He is a complete player. And a lot of times, you know this, when you get to March Madness, it's all about matchups. And there's really not too many bigs that can match up with him in the country, forget about in his conference. So I think Stephen F. Austin, they've been there before. They've upset some teams before in the tournament. But when you got a guy by the name of Sunshine and he can back it up, the Southland Player of the Year, he is a guy that's a lot of fun to watch. Look out for that team come NCAA time. Not a name that's easily forgotten. Sunshine, we'll be looking for him in those long locks. Uh, what about Providence? You also really like this team as an under-the-radar team. I'm going to give you another guy that I think is underrated as a coach, like Coach Calipari, Ed Cooley. Everybody knows he can recruit. He's a guy that always brings in top talent, but he's dealt with some injuries. Look out for Chris Dunn. This guy is a pro. He reminds me a little bit of Rajon Rondo, but he shoots the ball Whoa, better. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, and I don't think that's going out on the line. He shoots the ball better, he's, Malcolm. He is built like Rajon Rondo. He is a top talent. He's a kid right here from Connecticut. He's a guy that's going to be playing for a paycheck at the next level, can sit this shit out, and then they also have another guy that I think is an underrated player, LaDante Henton, another matchup nightmare. 
similar to the guy Sunshine, where he's a big that can step out on the perimeter and knock down shots. You put a smaller guy on him and he'll take him down low into the post. So I think Ed Cooley in Providence is another team kind of floating under the radar, but he's got some talented pieces and he's got tough kids. I think Providence is a team to watch out for as well. I love it. Those three under the radar teams looking to make their way towards the uh, the bracketology as Lu Joe Lenardi has just released those uh, numbers for us this week. Now, as we look at the second half of the season, as we really get our way towards March, what are you looking for as, as far as like players that what what do they need to do at this point when they're already tired? Well, I think it comes down to. You need star players, and you look at last year, UConn, they had a Shabazz Napier. You look at back when they had Kemba Walker doing the same thing. It comes down to, it's going to come down to one or two possessions in that game, and you always need a player that's going to step up and get you a bucket. I watched a game last night, Iona. They have a player by the name of A.J. English out of the MAC Conference. He is a guy, I think he's 17th in the country in scoring. He's a guy that leads his league in assist as well, too. Put his team on the shoulder last night, hit a game winner on the road against Manhattan. So I look for the teams, number one, that can defend, but then they also have guys that are matchup nightmares. We talked about Sunshine. I talked about LaDante Hinton. And I think it comes down to matchups and then teams that are going to be shooting the ball well from the perimeter. You know you're going to have games, okay, where it gets a little stagnant on defense. You need guys that can knock down shots on the perimeter. But then when it comes game time, you got to have a horse that can jump step up, get you a bucket when you need it. We know the cliche, defense wins championships. Three-time defensive MVP Malcolm Huckabee with those and notes. We're sending you back now to the American Conference of Sundo, Memphis, and USF back underway here in the second half. Trapped, another turnover. Chance to tie. Tried to force it into Guerrero. And the Bulls turn the ball over. Goodwin lost it in the lane when he and Guerrero collided. He keeps the ball. And they drain the three from outside Avery Woodson. That's that old lose the ball in the paint, find the three, make it play. <laughs> I think Anthony Collins is a little gimpy here. Remember, he banged that shoulder up in the UCF game on Wednesday, and he just had a hard collision with Shaq Goodwin in the lane a minute ago. I love this block, but watch the ball as it's moved ahead. One pass, a second pass, and then there's a third pass, which leads to the easy finish by Holston. But that ball went 94 feet. The ball was never dribbled. Pretty impressive. So Collins out of the game, the point guard for the Bulls. They try to go inside again to Guerrero. Godfrey bodies him up. And the foul there on Calvin. And there you have it. We hope you enjoyed the fast action coverage from ESPN's Buzzer Beater Network. We will continue to provide this service Wednesday nights and all day Saturdays throughout the college basketball season. That will do it for the Wendy's Halftime Report. I'm Prim Saripapat. Enjoy the second half. Thirty-four Pitt leading, and Mike Jaminski and yours truly, Tim Brando, will be on hand for that game at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Always look forward to the Battle of the Blues. Let's talk about the Hyundai stats in the first half of this game. And I think not only is Jamie Dixon going to be happy with his three-point shooting, but they are owning the glass as well. That's, and that's the thing. That's the battle that we thought North Carolina would have an advantage with, with that big front line. But Pitt really fighting along the way and also dominating the points in the paint area as well. And uh, who knew that they'd get a fast break point right off the opening tip? They did, and they haven't looked back. The second half is coming up.
North Carolina and Pitt, the first of two today in the ACC. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Toyota, official corporate champion of the ACC. By Hardy. And by Geico, official corporate champion of the ACC. Here at the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, we open the second half along with Mike Jaminski, Tim Brando. First of two this afternoon in the Atlantic Coast Conference. A very important game for Pitt in trying to get an influential victory to help give them the kind of resume needed to get to the NCAAs. They're in a cobble of about three or four teams, Mike, that would like to make a case by the time they get to Greensboro that they belong. Yeah, gonna, there's going to be very few unimportant games that you're going into the last month of the, of the season for any team. Michael Young adds to North Carolina's woes defensively to open the second half. Nice pass from Hicks to Johnson, lost it on the way up. And he's fouled on the backside. Looks like Jeter may have gotten him. You take a look at our Nissan scores. Clemson rolling over Virginia Tech. Tom Izzo's club out over Ohio State in the Big Ten. Tigers are one of those teams we were talking about that's in that same category with Pitt. They're, you know, there are they're, they're, they're so many teams right in the middle, and, you know, Clemson 6-6, six and six, uh, the win there, yep. start to, they, they start to creep up the chart a little bit. The thing that uh, Pittsburgh has is that win over Notre Dame. A win here against North Carolina would really help that resume. Clemson is really minus one of those influential victories. You know, NC State and Miami both have those Duke wins, but they also have bad losses, so they've got work to do as well. Yep. Robinson working against Barry. Shot clock down to five. Artis. Bailout foul is going to be committed at the end of the clock. Only two were on the clock when the foul was committed. And it's Jackson that picks it up. Here's our Carolina four keys to the game. Of course, we have North Carolina, North Carolina wanting to push tempo in this game. And uh, so far for Pitt, uh, mission accomplished. Uh, competing on the glass, winning that statistic at this point. 
We're just happy to see some more of our uh, pre-production make airwaves today. Our guys in the truck, Billy McCoy, and Rock Lee, Peter knocking it down, having to work feverishly with some transmission difficulties. The inclement weather we have outside, we appreciate all the fine men and women that are working behind the scenes to keep us on the air today. Barry. Oh, he got the old kick out. Reggie Miller foul, didn't he? How about that? Got the foot out there. It got hit by right. It's his first. And he'll get to the free throw line for two. Yeah, interesting to see uh, Barry get the start uh, for the second half for defensive purposes. That was a savvy move on the freshman's part. Running a curl and you're in a fadeaway situation. The foot comes out and the defender hits it as he's trying to close out. Reggie Miller specialized in that. 52-36. Well, Pitt began the first half, Mike, four of their first four. They've hit their first two to open the second. Yeah, I mean, it's going to come down for, to North Carolina though, for, for making some stops to get back in this game. Young against Johnson. Strong goes to the offhand. 54 to 36. Tim Artis is the only player for Pitt not shooting over 50% in this game. There's an answer by Isaiah Hicks, and it's 54 to 38. I mean, you can't, you just can't go basket for basket at this point. I'm curious to see if Pitt's three-point shooting stays as hot as it was. They look like they're, they're being a little bit more deliberate in this half, working their offense. A little more, uh, what we're accustomed clock. to seeing. Yeah, yeah. run some clock, a little more patience. Young again working on Johnson. That's going to be a push as he's driving the baseline. Bryce Johnson picking up that foul. Yeah. That's two on Johnson. And that's the thing with North Carolina. They always have a big on the ball. It makes it tough to inbounds. And Bryce Johnson very active with his hands. They, they just beat the five-second count. Right leaves it for Artis. Count it. I mean, that's business as usual. Dribble penetration, kick out, yeah, and they've been nailing a three. Well, they, you know, they've won three in a row at home. They're very tough here historically. And when they're shooting the ball like this, they're going to be very difficult to beat. Artists may have picked that one up. Here's the draw in. This is what you do. You pick it out. Johnson had to come up to stop penetration. That left Artis wide open. Well, that, they wish Artis could have gotten that foul. Instead, it's Michael Young. That's his third. And Jamie Dixon now will have to deal with at least some foul difficulty with his front. Page is down. Didn't see what looked, didn't see what happened. He looked like he, he kind of crumpled along the baseline. I don't know if he ran into somebody. Looks looks like his midsection. Uh, he's just uh, caught right at the chest, right on the pick. And this is what uh, you know. Roy Williams talked about uh, Pitt not going through picks nicely, or <laughs> yeah. you know, they don't do anything nicely. It's very, <laughs> it's a very physical, and that's the way Jamie Dixon has always coached. That it is. Um, it's not. It's not anything that's not just tough and hard nosed basketball. There's yeah, nothing dirty, dirty about no, it. No, no, not at all. I can't ever remember a, a pit team being described as finesse. No, ever. Page, not there. Joel Berry looking for some help. Jackson, he unloads. That's his game. His confidence just needs to pick up. The numbers haven't been where he'd want them, but he performed admirably last week against Boston College, and Roy Williams is very high on him. Especially if he's three, only 20% on the year, but the, you know the thing that impresses me is when he doesn't, he doesn't force anything. He really lets the game come to him. Very good passer. 
Robinson on the pop out. We're going to see the shot clock get down to 10 or under on almost every possession, you'd think. Unless there's a fast break opportunity as Teeter continues to line it up. He is five for five from the floor today. End to end, an answer from Barry. That's one of the first rushes up the floor that North Carolina has gotten in this game. And that's the thing, even after a made basket, you immediately have to go in the defensive mode if you're the other team. Pitch is a little lazy that time. On the wing, Robinson. I mean, look how good a hook that was. I mean, they're just running their offense flawless. Yep, and a loose ball. Page tries to come up with it and does save it to Jackson. He looks to Johnson, and a near turnover, unforced error, turns into a bucket for North Carolina. All right, how about Marcus Page, too, giving up his body, getting on the floor. Usually the first person on the floor gets the ball, and he made that play happen. Pitt is 7-7 seven of seven to open this half. And Jamie Dixon gets a timeout. Four for four to open the game. Seven for seven to open the second half. It's an 18-point lead at Peterson Event Center. Sixty-three to forty-five, our score. Five minutes gone here in the second half as we look at what's on the Ruby Tuesday game menu wow. in the ACC. Look at that, Clemson just burying Virginia Tech. Coming up later, Florida State, Georgia Tech, or others will see Wake Forest against Virginia. North Carolina State plays later today. A big one for them. Uh, a chance at a top ten victory against Louisville. Duke taking on Syracuse and Miami, B.C. For Syracuse and Raheem Christmas, really their last opportunity at doing something that's noteworthy without a postseason for Syracuse, their self-imposed ban announced a little over a week ago. You really, you really feel for the kids on, on that team. Yeah. Foul spotted underneath. 14-44 remaining as Randall picks up his second. I think Cam Newton needs to be a better leader. He's got so much more.
five, Tim, and Sheldon Jeter has uh, gotten the start and has taken advantage of it. Four pit pit players in double figures. He leads the way with 14, six of eight from the floor, two of three from behind the arc. That's about as efficient as it gets. Oh, just incredible. Youngster from Beaver Falls, transferred from Vanderbilt, was known as a guy that could shoot it. But he gives them a quicker athlete who can play either the power forward or the small forward, but it's that jumper and his ability to put it on the floor that really Jamie Dixon needed more of when he picked him up. Tokato looking for some help and Britt comes out to get it. Meets. Off the front rim, Robinson, smallest guy on the deck, gets it. You know, we were wondering if Pitt could keep up that hot shooting in the first half. They haven't missed yeah. in the second half. Incredible. They only missed on a foul, and you don't count those. They have been incredible today. Their best offensive showing. We've been doing Jamie Dixon's teams, great teams in NCAA tournament play, you and I, for many, many years, Mike. I've never seen them this efficient offensively, ever. Jones, that ball was deflected, I think. Page got a hand in there, and now he leads the fast break to Britt. Page is so good. He is so good. Does, uh, in, a, in a way, defensively, he gets uh, deflections. Almost unselfish to a fault, too, down the, down, the, down the other end. 63 to 47. Jackson Simmons back in, giving them a lift, giving, giving some nice minutes in the first half. Tokato will pick up the uh, foul for North Carolina. Well, ACC fans, Haviland uh, is giving you a chance to win a VIP trip to this year's tournament and a chance to make a half-court shot for a million dollars. You and a guest will get to enjoy the tournament VIP style. Then at halftime of a semifinal, we'll have a chance to shoot for a million dollars. Enter online today at theacc.com slash million Pitt just went eight and a half minutes without missing a field goal <laughs> that's that is incredible Jones on the dribble drive and a beautiful bounce pass entry to Sheldon Jeter who is on fire today 16 for him. His third double-figure scoring game of the year. Coming at a great time. Zone look defensively. Barry comes up short. Jamel Artis with the rebound. Robinson is really the quintessential hit point guard. And, yeah. once, and once again, Tim, they, you know, Pitt being very methodical in this half. A lot of runouts and up-tempo in the first half. Oh! How about that delivery from Artis inside the Jones? And the lead is 20. Largest of the day. That was a laser. Now against Jones. Good movement without the basketball, and uh, Jones just really surveying, and the guys in the middle for North Carolina kind of falling asleep. It looked like Britt got picked off or wasn't expecting that back cut. Well, Roy Williams, you know, had to blister his team at halftime because of their defensive deficiencies, but they haven't solved anything in the first eight minutes. Now, some of that is because Pitt is just shooting at an incredible clip, but they're also getting open looks. Page on a back cut. It's an easy one for North Carolina. There's been one consistent criticism at times in recent years with North Carolina. It's been that they have not always played their best on the defensive end of the floor. Yes, that's changed this year, though, Tim. You're right. They're much improved. I mean, this, yep. is, this is really kind of an aberration. You're right. This year it is, without question. They've relied on their defense so much more because they've lacked the offense that they've had in past years. And there's another easy one inside. I don't know if I've ever seen a wow. perfect shooting half from a team, but we're closing in on this. Is, this is like Villanova Georgetown in 85 when they shot 72% to win the national championship. Jeter's 18 now ties a career high. 
And uh, on the glass, a foul committed as Jones went rocketing in there. James is on the receiving end and not real happy about it. But the zoo is all about Pitt today. And it is some Pitt. Pitt is 10 of 11 this half, 69% on the game, and lead it by 20. Well, Haviland is giving you a chance to pick this year's all ACC first and second team. Log on to the ACC.com slash fan vote to pick your all-star lineup. Then check back during the tournament to see who makes the fans all ACC team. Cast your vote on the ACC.com slash fan vote today. Look at that. That is uh, incredible. That guy should have to run. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, and How dare you miss a shot? Pitt, Pitt comes in eighth in the conference at 44% uh, field goal percentage. Yeah. Somewhere Harold Jensen is smiling to the former Villanova star who did not miss a shot in that championship game against Patrick Ewing Cruz. They shot 72% in that game. That's, it can be done. Teams can shoot 70% of the game, especially when they get that kind of look. Jones inside the random. Yeah, no, uh, again, the, the, assist to, the assist to field goal ratio, extremely high in this game. Alley-oop. But Johnson was pushed. Got a foul. Looks like Artis may have gotten it. Well, here's one for you. Time for our ACC basketball trivia. Which player has made the most free throws in North Carolina men's basketball team history? ACC fans, you can find uh, trivia questions like this and more in the all-new ACC Trivia Challenge app loaded with thousands of ACC basketball facts and figures. The ACC Trivia Challenge is a free download available for both Apple and Android. We'll be back uh, a little bit later on with the answer to that trivia question. Got any ideas? Not a clue. Really? Not a clue. I'm surprised by that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, you think it will be a front court player or a back court player? I would say front court. Okay. As, mu as much as Coach Smith and, and Roy yeah. Williams' offense is built around the inside, you would think it would be an, a front right. court or interior player. You may be on to something. Cameron Wright is posting up Page, could not get the ball from Robinson, gets it back on the wing. Missed that one 
That was a bad miss. That would actually graze the back rim. End to end, Barry. That's all ball. It's a tie, and it's going to be North Carolina's underneath their own hoop. Pretty nice job getting back. I think if I was North Carolina, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull that one back. Barry really didn't have numbers in that situation. Mm -hmm. Robinson tied him up. Page on a little wraparound move. Can't connect. On the loose ball, pulled down by Jones. Outlet to Robinson. Play. Meeks knocks it out of there with 21 on the shot clock. Look at that. That's that's outstanding that's ratio. 23 assists, 30 field goals. And they're, and, and they're only playing with three turnovers in this game, too, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Both teams are. I mean, both teams are taking care of the ball. What is amazing is how many easy looks North Carolina's giving up. And that's what's got to be bothering Roy Williams. Over the first half and the second. And that foul is committed by Barry, his first. He's trying to, they're just trying to keep the ball out of uh, Robinson's hands. Uh, trying to be in an all-out denial. Max using his quickness against Johnson. No way he can stay with him. And he picks up his third. Newkirk checks back into the game. Will replace Robinson. Well, I just, you know, Tim really impressed with Pitt. They, they really grabbed control of this game right from the right from the opening tip of that layup. Yep, they did. And have controlled it for 30 minutes. Barry gets the foul, his second. And North Carolina came back to tie the game. They were getting great ball movement. But once Pitt put the pedal to the metal and really got that outstanding 13-2 run got together, North Carolina has not had a response. Jones nails another three. I mean, it's almost as if the white towel is, is being thrown up by North Carolina defensively. Yeah, the, you know, the body language isn't great no. in, the, in, the, in the foul on the play, but um, it almost it almost looks like Pitt is running 5 on 0 yeah. offense out You're there. Right. Johnson will have a chance at an old-fashioned three-point play after that foul. Committed on the turnaround by Artis. That's his fourth foul, and they'll get him out of the game as a result. But the way the game is going, Mike, you're going to have a lot of possessions. North Carolina should be comfortable in an up and down game, but you have to get a few stops. We touched on earlier, and it's been a common theme in this half that uh, Pitt has been very methodical in their half court offense, really shortening the game and taking the shot clock down. Yeah, when you're down 20 to this team and they can work the clock and protect the ball, it's almost like being down 40. I, I get why North Carolina's uh, shoulders are thrown. That time the iron finally unkind to Pittsburgh on a day when they have been playing the nylon song very consistently. Second time this year they have five players in double figures, Pittsburgh. Page from downtown. Tokato keeping it alive. It was a poor pass that time. He tried to get to Meeks. Leads to a turnover. That's what I said. Sometimes he takes chances with his passes and gets him in trouble. Ball was slapped away by Jeter. It will be controlled to North Carolina. Now close captioning for ACC basketball is brought to you by Bo Jenkins. Famous chicken and biscuits. It's Bo Todd. Barry from downtown. Too strong. Jackson 
with the long rebound. And then Jones was challenging him and picked up the foul. We'll be back after this word from your local ACC station. Seventy-four to fifty-three, our score here. And Jamel Artis is our Haviland Player of the Week. He's been outstanding. You see the numbers that he had against both Syracuse and Bryant this past week, and he's added to that today with ten points, five rebounds, five assists, getting a little time on the bench with his fourth foul, but comfortably out front by twenty-one. Yeah, this is arguably the, the worst scoring game he's had in this stretch. We talked about the last eight games. Averaging 20 points a game, Jim. Sheldon Jeter took over. Yeah, five times <laughs> over 20. So. That's the thing. You know, Pittsburgh's done all this today, Mike, and no one's trying to do too much. Back cut by Robinson. Out of bounds. It'll go to North Carolina. Jamie a little upset that there was no whistle that time. He thought maybe there could have been. Well, nice, uh, nice help that time by Kennedy Meeks to come over and meet him and stop the play. Page pops out off the front iron, and that foul will go against Meeks over the back. As again, Derek Randall had quality position that time, number 11 for Pittsburgh. That shooting numbers starting to come down for North Carolina, no second chance points, and uh, the body language again not looking good for the Tar Heels. like Jeter has been tremendous playing with extreme confidence on the offensive end as well today and all three of his rebounds on the uh, offensive glass just been a steadying influence in coming into the game and Jamie Dixon told us we'd see some of uh, Ochebo we'd see some of Randall Juan Quo we've seen uh, Aaron Phillips Juan Quo as well they are comfortably in front now. 23-point lead with seven and change remaining. And around the country, some people are tuning in and seeing this score someplace and going, really? 
Phillips hit with 70 plus points and that well, much time remaining. Well, remember our question about the uh, free throw shooting? In the uh, front court, you were accurate because the answer is. Yeah, and, and obviously you thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> it. was an NCAA record for him. Well, one of, one of the more impressive stats for me about Tyler Hansbrough with all the other stuff is that he never lost at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Yeah, that's right. I don't know how many players can say that. Yeah, uh, no question. Randall checks out to much applause. As Michael Young checks back onto the floor, number two, the sophomore from nearby Duquesne, St. Benedict's Prep. And it's now 76 to 55 with just under seven to play. Brent trying to check Robinson, and they go with a 1-4 set here. Wide open, right, finally dissed a little late, maybe too late, but still plenty of time on the clock. Robinson back to G. How low, how do you do? Timmy, look at, look at the poise on that play. Almost a turnover, but they were able to corral it and get a basket late. It's gotten to the point now where you can say maybe North Carolina just caught Pitt on the wrong day. Jackson, not there. Gita with a beautiful tap out, and he got it right into Young's hands. Well, and you know, there are, there are a lot of coaches that don't like that week off, you know, mm -hmm. maybe a little rust in the game. And of course, the, such an emotional week for this program. Right, Johnson gets a slam off the feed from Jackson, and it's 78 to 57. And it was the first turnover of the half for Pittsburgh. Two in a row now. Page on a run out. Gets the easy one to go. And it's 78 to 59. Jamie Dixon doesn't want his team, and he's uh, upset right now. He doesn't want his team falling asleep right with this lead, going into their home run trot too early. Right. Lots of space to take your shots today against North Carolina's defense. Britt, good ball fake. And the dime dropped to Meeks. 80 to 61. Nice job creating that time, the little pump fake. Meeks had his hands ready. Look at that, 22 assists on 24 field goals for North Carolina in a, what looks to be blowout losing cause. Their problems have not been offensive. They have been defensive. Yeah, and the timeout that time, and uh, North Carolina running a lot more run and jump here lately. have gotten a few turnovers. Mike, we've got a lot of friends in the Pittsburgh area, but none greater for me than Carol Dino Cook, the longtime sports information director turned historian and college football commentator at ABC and later I worked with him at ESPN what a dear man he passed away of just a short time ago and the, the press room is named for him there named in honor of Carol H. Cook we all called him Dino and let me tell you what he did he took all of his life's earnings he took care of his mother single had no family other than his mom and upon his passing he bequeathed all of his worth to uh Prep and to Pittsburgh, uh, over $900,000 contribution. What a wonderful man. Well, and, uh, a guy who's near and dear to my heart, Dick wrote uh, Pitt Radio Landers. Look at that, 36th year. Uh, was the first number retired at Duke back in 1952, and Tim in his senior year, senior game against North Carolina, dropped 50. Well, what a baseball player. Yeah, that's a great, yeah, all great baseball career. <laughs> Incredible here in Pittsburgh as Jeter Gets an easy one. Of course, working with him is the legendary Bill Hillgrove. 46 years he's been calling games at Pitt, and of course, the voice of the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. Jackson gets the bump as he takes it into the painted area. Well, here's the look, and you see they've gotten the ball into the middle of the floor. The drive just breaks everything down. Team is, team, team is so unselfish. There's Bill. Yeah, there he is. What a wonderful man. Always enjoy chatting with him. You know, 
sports information director here told me, Mr. Hotchkiss, he, one of the best, best in the business, he said, Bino called me after uh, we built the new building, and he said, now, if you're going to name that media room after me, make sure the food's good. <laughs> And, uh, one of the more distinctive voices in sport broadcasting. Yeah, somewhere up in heaven, he will be telling Dean today, this score is unbelievable. I can't believe it. In traffic, Jones leaves it for that guy, and that guy has been hot all day. Sheldon Jeter finally misses from outside, and a quick foul given up on the other end. It all remain, you know, in, in North Carolina, they they're going to ha they have to, you know, be more aggressive in their in their defense, extend their defense. But this is such a good ball handling team yeah. for Pitt that they're making all the right plays. And Page gets to the free throw line. That foul was committed by Wright, his third. Well, you rarely say this because Pitt usually, with the way they play. Uh, a 10-point lead feels like 20, a 20-point lead like 40, but the style of play allows for this kind of thing to happen. A tip in by Tokuto. A turnover here or there, and then suddenly you've got a game again. Alley-oop. Yay! For right. Or not. Yeah, or not. Good answer down the other end of the floor. Full court pressure for North Carolina. A couple of passes and a dunk. Page. And North Carolina looks to be competing on this end of the floor. On the defensive end, they aren't. They simply aren't competing on the defensive end. Tokido, not there. And one of the better offensive rebounding teams, too, in the league. Uh, Pitt has taken them out of that in very few second-chance points. Right again. All of these shots. They're, they're almost 20 points over their season average. It's <laughs> and we spent how long talking about uh, what it would take for Pitt to win today? <laughs> yeah, we're wondering if they could score. Yeah. We're wondering if they could score enough points to yeah. be in this game. Yeah. First career double-double for Cameron Wright. 13 and 10 assists. He has been dropping some serious dimes. To go along with points, like that. Right on cue. 88 to 65. This is a coronation of Pitt basketball in the ACC on the Tar Heels' first visit to the Peterson Event Center. Treated them rather rudely. Do you think? <laughs> Tokuto gets that fadeaway to fall inside the lane. And the timeout taken. Listen to this crowd. One of the great facilities in college basketball, and they are enjoying this. Well, let's take a look at our auto zone in the zone, and boy, has Sheldon Jeter been in that today. Started out six of eight in the first half, was getting great looks, working inside and outside. Very versatile scorer. Terrific mid-range game. Career high 22 points for him. Unbelievable performance, really, on every front. And he's picked, he's picked good team to play against. His prior career high was 18 against Syracuse. So he plays well against good teams. That's a guy that was averaging just a little over 11 minutes per game coming in. He'll yeah, be getting more minutes now. I'd say he probably earned a little more court time. You think? Now Pittsburgh will milk clock. Force uh, North Carolina to commit fouls, which took the goal will oblige. And it is a happy zoo. It may not be San Diego weather-wise, but it is some zoo in Pittsburgh.
ABC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports, also streaming live now on the ACC.com and on the official ACC mobile app. Our game summary presented by Valero. Look at that final graph, 18 of 25 you in know, the I, second half. I really don't care who Pitt was playing today. You know, if you're going to shoot 66% and 8 of 15 from three, uh, you're, you're going to beat most teams on an afternoon like this. We had a time in college basketball when we're talking about uh, scoring being uh, not what you'd like it to be. Numbers down across the board. Pittsburgh, one of those teams that have a way of making teams look bad offensively. But today, they've been picturesque offensively. And you see with three ball going down for Nate Britt. Now, hear, hear this out. North Carolina has 23 assists on 26 Field goals, field goals, right. And only four turnovers. Yeah. You think you win most games like yeah, that? Absolutely. Pitt has 30 assists on 37 made baskets <laughs> with four turnovers. I mean, they put on a clinic, Pitt. Uh, North Carolina's defense maybe not as much as they want, but look at look, this is what they've got in front of them look, at Virginia, at Syracuse, Boston College. The good news about this league is that you have enough influential games to play that you can earn your way in. And this win, to go along with the Notre Dame win, puts them right where I think they want to be. Well, and, and you look at it, and, uh, you know, this is the second of three ranked teams that, <laughs> that they had to go up against. That's so, right. You know, they, they were in the game against Louisville, wound up losing. They had this a big win, and uh, Virginia going to be a big challenge. Notre Dame was number eight when they beat them. North Carolina is 12 now. Of course, the rankings don't matter as much to the committee as the RPI ranking of a team. Good loss, bad loss, that kind of thing. Pittsburgh is very much, with this victory today, moving to 17-9 and nine and 6-6 six and six in league play, they are very much in the NCAA tournament conversation. Grit picks up the foul, his second. But Jamie Dixon's, you know, he came in and took uh, 10 teams in right away as a head coach. He's had great success. The only thing missing, really, on his resume is a Final Four. Yeah, that, that deep run into the, uh, into the NCAA tournament, which we all expected would come. Uh, Villanova took him out in 09 with the team, that great game that ended with Scotty Orange going end to end. Uh, other than that, okay, that's the only thing missing from this Pittsburgh's, uh, Pittsburgh basketball program's resume. And he's been, and, and Jamie has been incredibly loyal to this university. Without a too. doubt. He's had a ton of offers to leave. But they took a, you know, they offered him when Ben Howland left. You know, they, they gave him the, the keys to the car, and he's really carried on what Ben Howland start, started. Well, we touched on issues, trying times. You know, he's had plenty of them himself in his life with his sister, and he's proven to be tough with his program, loyal to his players, and very much a cornerstone to his family as well. well a reminder coming up next. Most of you will see Devin Thomas and Wake visiting Malcolm Brockton and number two, Virginia. Others will uh, get Monte Brandon and Florida State and Atlanta to take on Marcus George's Hunt and Georgia Tech. You can find out more information on how to watch the ACC Network games online and on television on the official ACC mobile app or at the ACC.com. Well, Virginia without Justin Anderson. And likely it will be without him until we get into conference tournament but but yeah. season play. You know what I think that too, I think he, they're going to be able to sustain that. Obviously they're not as good without him, but they're deep enough to, to at least ride that out and hopefully get him back. North Carolina coming with full court pressure. Robinson and company break it and then turn it over. Britt with a quick outlet to Jackson. And just like that, we lead down to 14 as Jamie says, Let's talk about this again. You know, again, that's what I talked about, losing interest in the game and going into your home run trot and Jamie trying to get his team fired up. Remember, this is a North Carolina team that can specialize in late game runs. It's a nine to nothing spurt now in the last 112 for the Tar Heels. Well, a reminder, this is one that Mike and I always look forward to. Nine Eastern. Battle of the Blues, it's North Carolina, it's Duke. The intensity, the history, the tradition. Coach K, Roy Williams, Hall of Famers. Others will see Olivier Hanlon, 
and BC travel to Tallahassee to take on Florida State. Should be fun. Really looking forward to that one here on the ACC Network. There's the Tar Heel schedule. It's, uh, it's going to be, you know, you got the Duke game, and then that's going to be a big game for North Carolina State coming to their building after the loss earlier in the year. And, of course, you got you got Duke twice in the, in the last couple weeks of the season as well. At Miami will be a difficult game for the uh, – Jimmy Larry Nagus club has just been uh, hard to figure. Other than Angel Rodriguez, as he goes, so go the game. They really, they're really a tough loss at Wake Forest the other day. Uh, Rodriguez missing a layup point-blank range that would have sent the game into overtime. I had that big win at Duke, uh, but then uh, lost at home to Georgia Tech, uh, sort of twilight zone team here in the ACC. Staying strong with the basketball on this end is the mantra out of that timeout. Jamie Dixon ball. And Britt picks up the reach-in foul against Janelle Artis. 59 ticks remaining. I'm impressed. I, I thought that Jamie Dixon's team, the way they played of late, winning three of their last four and, and really having a control of the game with Louisville until the 10 minute mark. I'm impressed with what we've seen today. And close captioning for ACC basketball brought to you by Bojangles. Famous chicken and biscuits. It's bow time. Yeah, no point. I mean, if you look at this team, if if they score in the 80s, they're going to be tough to beat. Well, they may draw a great deal of confidence from this win. Circumstances, scheduling or not, North Carolina is North Carolina. I mean, that, there's a reason this place is always sold out. It doesn't mean that it's only going to be a sold out arena for the big schools because they love their basketball here but this is a valued win in the uh, Atlantic Coast Conference and will go a long way to Pittsburgh. Well it seems like you know every team that we've seen has had these stretches of just killers you know against you know playing against Louisville yep. and then you know, uh, North Carolina and then having to go to Virginia you know this, mm -hmm. every coach can look at their schedule and you, know, have, you shake your head about a five game <laughs> stretch. Yeah well, you got uh, as many as four teams in the top ten in a given week. And then the rest of the teams are still pretty good. It's not like the middle of the pack is not capable. We've seen those teams win on the road in big game environments. Uh, Roy has uh, told them not to foul. They're going to play defense and crap. But he's calling off the dog, so to speak. And we'll let the clock wind out. Well, it started with the jump ball. It did. It start. It did. It was an easy layup, and uh, Pitt never looked back. Yet another offensive rebound. The ball was tipped, and Robinson will dribble it out. And Pittsburgh gets its most meaningful win in a month. Beating North Carolina today, 89 to 76, before a jam-packed crowd and a very happy Zuber. Well, moved to 17 and 9, 6 and 6 in the ACC. Roy Williams Club drops to 18 and 7, 8 and 4 in conference play. We'll be back to recap it when we come back.
ACC basketball is being brought to you by Food Line, official supermarket of the ACC. By Geico, official corporate champion of the ACC. By Toyota, official corporate champion of the ACC. And by New York Life Insurance Company, official corporate champion of the ACC. A winter wonderland outside here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A nor'easter blew in with North Carolina, but Pitt said you can cool your jets today. 89 to 76, the final score. And uh, Mike Jaminski standing by with the head coach, Jamie Dixon. Jamie, uh, we'll get to the defense first. What about your team's offensive performance? I mean, it started with the jump ball, and you guys never looked back. You know, we've been pretty good against man-to-man, -man, really, for the most part, but uh, gotten better against the zone. And, you know, we're a different team than we were earlier in the year. We, that's what it is. I mean, you can't uh, – obviously, we had some guys out. We uh, had to find some uh, guys to put some in our different positions, and uh, uh, we're really moving the ball well, uh, knocking down shots, and – We'll, uh, we'll get better in our next one. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a stat. I think you were like 30 assists on 37 made field goals with four turnovers. I mean, that's astonishing. Yeah, no, the passing was terrific. I thought uh, facing up, finding the open guy against man and zone, really. And uh, it was uh, good to see. We handled the press pretty well, too, as well. Make some free throws down the stretch, but nice. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's obviously a very good team. But we played well, and we've been playing well. We had a bad 10-minute stretch against Louisville. But uh, otherwise, we've been pretty good for about a couple, uh, couple about a month now. Well, you, uh, you mentioned that stretch that you're in and, uh, you know, the Louisville game, the win here, and now you got at Virginia coming up. Your thoughts about that game, a kind of a killer stretch for you. Yeah, well, it's, it's called the ACC, and uh, we're excited about it, and we're looking forward to getting better. It's a young group that's uh, gotten better all year long and fought through some injuries, and uh, sophomores or freshmen are becoming older guys. Congratulations. Thank Great you. win. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Tim. All right. Thank you, Mike, and congratulations to Jamie Dixon. His team really performed at a high level. How about Sheldon Jeter, one of those guys that couldn't miss? All right, he missed four times. He had 22. When we come back, Mike will chat with him. Stay right where you are. A reminder, coming up next, a Wake Forest Demon Deacons will give it a try in Charlottesville against second-ranked Virginia. And others will get Florida State. Ponte Brandon and company trying to get the job done against the resurgent Georgia Tech led by Michael Georgia's Hunt. That's coming up next, one of those two. Well, our score here, 89-76 to 76 was the final. A 13-point win for Pitt moments ago. Mike Jaminski chatted with Sheldon Jeter, who had a career high 22. 
I'm with uh, Sheldon Jeter. And uh, Sheldon, first of all, talk about this game. Uh, you guys had a, a tough loss at Louisville, bouncing back. What was the preparation like coming in for North Carolina? Um, be a lot tougher than we were there. You know, the last 10 minutes there, we really crumbled. You take away maybe the last two minutes, we played exceptional basketball and we played really tough also. So I think that's what it, that was the big difference. And we worked on it and the coaches got on us about how like how they we thought we were tough, but we really weren't. And I think tonight we showed it. Talk a little bit about a career high for you today, your previous career high against a pretty good Syracuse team. You seem to play well against good, the uh, the better teams. What went well for you today? Everything. <laughs> I just got into a rhythm and I was being aggressive and it just and it worked for me. I, um, I mean, my teammates and also, I mean, a lot of times my teammates were finding me in open spots, so it wasn't it wasn't that hard to score points. It was all about just knocking down the shots and having confidence to take them also. You're in a, a tough stretch. You're playing some really good teams and you've got a, a really good Virginia team coming up next at their place. Your thoughts about that game? We can't take any steps back. We got to go forward. I mean, we were saying it before the game and uh, during practice. Um, this is our season, you know, we, we lose, we're done, Matt, pretty much, you know, so we, um, we, it's win or go home, basically, right? That's the, that's what we're in right now. Well, congratulations again on a career high. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Tim. All right, Mike, you, you have to take that into account. These guys were playing with a sense of desperation and Mike has made his way back over to me now. And I, I don't think that that's something that we can forget about. North Carolina had a very difficult week. Uh, and had not played since the Boston College game. Pittsburgh is playing with an understanding that you only get these chances against top flight RPI teams so often, you got to take advantage. And, and I think, too, Tim, that, you know, the game that North Carolina played today would have beaten most teams, no, a lot of teams, a doubt. Yeah. but they just ran into a, you know, you, nobody expected Pitt to shoot 65%, let alone 8 of 15 from 3. You see the second yeah. half shooting, you know, thought, we thought there was going to be a drop-off, but they, they got even better. Yeah. Well, you heard what Sheldon said to you. It all went well today. One of those days if you were on the road and a North Carolina Tar Heels fan. Back to wrap it up after this. We welcome you back here to the Peterson Events Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where our final score was 89 to 76, along with Mike Jaminski, Tim Brando. And we are uh, really so happy to have the opportunity to bring you the game that we have on Wednesday night. We're both thrilled anytime we get the assignment at the beginning of the season, Duke, North Carolina. I think I've done seven or eight of them in a row now, and it is a thrill. It truly is one of the great assignments in sports. And this matchup now, uh, takes on all new meaning, I would think, for the Tar Heels. You know, after what happened today, there will be a shock treatment practice or two 
before they get to Cameron. What do you make of that matchup? Yeah, and I, and I think it's going to work well. They, again, we talked about the week off and all that, of course, happened yeah. during that time. But, uh, you know, both teams playing today, uh, both teams going to get tested, Duke at, at Syracuse uh, mm-hmm. later on. So they're going to have time to rest. There's going to be time to prepare for both of those teams on Wednesday and uh, should be a heck of a matchup. I, I fully expect North Carolina yeah. to have shed this, uh, this mm-hmm. loss and be ready for that game. Well, again, a reminder, it's a matchup of the Blues, the battle of the Blues, nothing like it. The history, the tradition, the numbers are just staggering. North Carolina meets Duke. Blue Devils will have some first-timers in this rivalry, including Jaleel Okafor. Others will see Boston College in a matchup against Florida State. Both of those teams looking to maybe get out of the way of the first day of the ACC tournament. It's North Carolina Duke or BC against Florida State. Now, the uh, Duke freshmen that, that are going to be playing in this game for the very first time, what's that going to be like for them? Well, you know, as with all freshmen, there are a lot of firsts, but there's no first like your first Duke-North Carolina game, <laughs> yeah. you know. And yeah. uh, for Okafor and Jones and Winslow, it's, it's going to be a, a new experience. Just they think they've experienced Cameron. They're going to really yeah. experience Cameron yeah. on Wednesday night. Well, you've said it many times, the adrenaline flow being what it is in that game. Sometimes it takes a game or two after that to get over yep. uh, playing in the Duke Carolina game. There are the standings uh, in the ACC. Virginia uh, without, as we mentioned, Justin Anderson and a two-game lead. But now the, for Duke, Louisville, and North Carolina, it's that race to stay away from the fifth position. Yeah. Really, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And then, in, you know, one of those one of those five teams is going to be playing on, on Wednesday, which is a, a it's a huge difference in the, in the tournament and your preparation and, and how you advance through it. So mm-hmm. all of these games, all of these games critical. Jamie Dixon, a very big win. You could tell in his interview with you today that he was about as happy as he could possibly be. Was he? Ladies the, and gentlemen, was a lot of fun for us today. We enjoyed bringing it to you. The North Carolina Tar Heels fall short on the road. 89 to 76. And coming up next at 9 Eastern, you'll see the matchups. One of these two games will be coming your way. You've been watching coverage of the ACC on the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycock Sports.